And let's look at more applications of differentiation. In this particular session, we'll take a look at increasing and decreasing functions and the first derivative test. And they are related, right? Increasing and decreasing functions are related to the first derivative test. Okay. And we will, we will learn how to determine the intervals on which a function is increasing or decreasing. We will learn how to apply the first derivative, the first derivative test to find relative extremes of a function. First one, let's take a look at increasing and decreasing functions. Um, first one, let's take a look at the definition of increase and decrease functions. A function f is increasing only in interval if for any two numbers x1 and x2. So let's say, okay, we have x1 here, x2 right here. So f of x1 is that f of x1 is x2. f of x2 is here. So if the x1 is less than x2, because if x1 is on the left hand side of x2, then if guarantee that f, f of x1 less than f of x2, um, meaning y value at x equals to x1 is smaller than the y value at x equals to x2, that means it's increasing in the row. Okay, uh, a function f is decreasing on the interval if for any two numbers x1 and x2 in the interval. And uh, if x1 is less than x2, it's guaranteed that f of x1 is always greater than f of x2. f of x1 is always on top of two then this will give us a decreasing decreasing interval okay that's a difference between increase and decreasing but you know they are exactly opposite the function is increasing if as x moves to the right its graph moves up just like this as you go to the right moves up, then it's increasing. And then as x moves to the right, the graph moves down like that. And we know it's a decreasing interval. We move from left to right, it's flat, just like that. That means it's a constant interval. And then uh, if you look at it, for decreasing interval, the slope of tangent line at every single point is going to be negative. If you look at all this line, the negative slope. And uh, for the constant, constant interval, every single slope equals zero, meaning it's flat. So slope equals zero. And then all the positive, all the increasing intervals, the slope or tangent line is positive. This is all negative. Zero here and positive here. So in this in this particular example, from negative infinity to a it's a decreasing interval and from um, a to b it's a constant interval and from b to positive infinity it's increasing interval okay so the test for increasing and decreasing functions that will be a function that is continuous on a cl closing interval a comma b at the inversion goal on the opening interval a comma b if 
a prime of x, which is slope of tangent line. It's greater than zero for all x in the uh, open interval a comma b. Then f is increasing in the closed interval a comma b. If the slope of tangent line is less than zero for all x in a comma b, then f is decreasing. And closing the ball a comma b. If slope of tangent line equals zero for all x in a comma b, then then the function f is constant on closing the ball a comma b. Uh, let's take a look at first example intervals on which f is increasing or decreasing. Find the open intervals on which f of x equals x cubed minus three over two x squared is increasing or decreasing. So we're going to apply the, the test really quick. But before that, we got to find the derivative of f of x, a prime of x. So we apply the power rule, we get a 3x plus 1 minus 3 over 2 times 2 times x2 minus 1. So we get 3x squared minus 3x. If we look at this factor of 3x, then we get x minus 1. Then use a zero factor property setting 3x equals zero, setting x minus 1 equals zero. Then solve x. Divide 3 from both sides of the equation, adding 1 from both sides of the equation. Cancel 3, we end up with x equals to 0. Here x equals to 1. So basically, we have two critical numbers. And now, if you look at it, we're going to it's two critical numbers with separated domains. Domain for any polynomial function is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So these two numbers, 0, 1, we separate the domain into three different intervals, three sub-intervals. OK, first of all, put down the test interval. First one is from negative infinity to zero. Second one from zero to one. Third one is from four to positive infinity. I'm gonna pick a value from each interval. X equals negative one, x equals half, x equals two. Okay then and let's find the sign of a prime of x. So let's find a prime of a negative one first. So it's th three times negative one square minus three times negative one becomes three plus three, which is six. Six is definitely positive. That means so this interval is increasing in the row. The second one, please x with half in the first derivative, so 3 half square minus 3 times half, which end up with negative 0.75. So this is definitely negative. Negative indicate decreasing in the row. The third one, 3 times 2 square minus 3 times 2, which is 12 minus 6, which is also 6. 6 again is positive. That gives us an increase in interval. So as you can see, the increase in intervals from negative infinity to 0 union, 1 to positive infinity, and decreasing intervals. From zero to one. Okay. So this is just solution what we just cover and the table below. This table is super useful. I definitely should utilize the table to 
to test the interval for the increasing and decreasing intervals. Okay, and then the two critical numbers in this case is super important to separate the domain to the different sub intervals and test each interval correspondingly. If you look at a graph, right? Our graph looks like this from negative infinity to zero. It's going up. The graph is going up. So it's, so it's uh, the slope of tangent line here is positive, right? Uh, from zero to one, it's decreasing the slope here. Is, the slope of tangent line here is negative. From one to positive infinity, Okay, it's going up. And then the slope of tangent line is positive again. Okay. So let's take a look at the, the procedures for finding the intervals of which a function is increasing or decreasing. So assuming f be continuous on a on the interval, on the open interval a comma b, to find the open interval on which f is increasing or decreasing. Use the following steps. First one. First step, locate the critical numbers um, by finding the derivative, right? Set equal zero. Find the critical numbers. And use these numbers to determine testing levels. And second step, determine the sign of a prime of x and one test values in each of the intervals. So I use a theorem to determine whether f is increasing or decreasing on each interval. Okay. And these guidelines are also valid if the interval a comma b is replaced by any of the following three intervals involving the infinities, right? So um, a function is strictly monotonic if the interval if the function is increasing on the entire domain or decreasing on the entire domain. So let's look at this one, right? This one is totally increasing from left to right. It's going all the way up. Right? So it's increasing all the way. So that means it's um, so that means it's Strictly monotonic. Could be all the way going down, right? Like this one. Okay. As you can see from left to right, it's going all the way down. It's already decreasing, so this is also strictly monotonic. The function show below is not strictly monotonic because if you look at this piecewise function, three different pieces. In the middle piece equals zero, which is constant function between zero to one. So between zero to one, this particular part of the graph is actually constant. Although the other two um, pieces of the graph are increasing all the way. But the middle section is constant, that means it's not strictly monotonic. It's partially monotonic. And next thing uh, is the first derivative test. So we're going to use the first derivative test to locate the extremes. If any. So the interval on which a function is increasing or decreasing is not difficult to locate the relative extreme of the function. So if the function go from increasing to decreasing, go from increasing to decreasing, we have a decay of relative maximum okay. 
if the function go from decreasing to increasing indicates a relative minima it's increasing decreasing for example like this particular, particular example f of x equals to x cubed minus 3 over 2x squared for negative infinity of 0 as you can see it's increasing right from 0 to 1 is decreasing at this Point zero zero is relative minimum, and here is decreasing until increasing. So the point at this point one and negative half. That's a relative minimum. Here. Okay, so you can easily use this uh, need to to determine the relative extremes. Okay, so let's take a look at the first derivative test. Let's see be a critical number of a function um, that is continuous on an open interval i containing c. If f is differentiable on the interval, we accept possibly a c. f of c could be classified as follows. If a prime of c means slope of tangent line, Changes from negative to positive. This is negative to positive. Then we have a relative minimum here at x equals c. So uh, if you uh, put it as uh, increasing decreasing in the world, then we have decreasing to increasing. Then we have relative minimum. Here, second scenario, if the slope of tangent line changes from positive to negative, positive meaning increasing to negative, which is decreasing, then relative maximum occurs at x equals c. If the side does not change, meaning if it is Increasing still remain increasing, right? Then there's no extrema. If it's decreasing, still remain decreasing. Or the slope of tangent line stays positive all the way, or stays negative all the way. Then there's no extrema. Okay, that's the essence of the first derivative test. Okay, so let's take a look at this example and apply the first derivative test find the relative extrema of the function f of x equals half of x minus sine x in the interval 0 to pi so it's a predetermined interval 0 to pi so in order to find the relative extremas first step we got to figure out increasing decreasing intervals now to do that we need to find a derivative of the original function so using the power rule here, half of x becomes half times 1, and derivative of sine x becomes cosine x. So the derivative becomes half minus cosine x. Now we're going to set derivative equals 0, which means half minus cosine x equals 0. So that tells us cosine x equals half. And in between 0 to 2 pi, the x value is equals either equal to pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. So basically, we get two critical numbers in this particular predetermined domain. Now, next step, we just got to do the create a table, right? Perform a test. So now, test intervals. The domain starts with 0 to pi over 3. Second interval is from pi over 3 to 5 pi over 3. 
the interval is from 5 pi over 3 to 2 pi. So here we're going to pick test value for each interval. First interval we can pick xc equals 2 pi over 6. Second interval we can pick um, pi over 2. Third interval we can pick Eleven pi over six. Now I'm going to replace all these into the derivative sine of a prime of x. So we're going to replace a prime of pi over six. So we get a half minus cosine pi over six. Cosine pi over six is radical three over two. I make this negative less than zero so we have negative that means it's a it's a decreasing interval and second test value at prime of pi over two so we end up with half minus cosine pi over two Cosine pi over 2 is 0, so it's half minus 0, which is half. And this is positive. So this interval is increasing interval. The last interval, test value is 11 pi over 6. So we have half minus cosine 11 pi. And cosine the, the third interval, I mean the fourth quadrant is is positive so it's going to be half minus radical 3 of 2 and which is also negative so this is the decreasing level now if you look at it from decreasing to increasing we have a relative minimum occurs at x equals pi over 3 and relative maximum occurs at x equals to 5 pi over 3 okay because from it's increasing to decreasing now we have relative Increasing and decreasing you know, at two max. Okay, so that's basically pretty much it, right? So we locate both extremes. So as you can see, the table below gives us a very good idea. Um, basically, the increasing level, the decreasing level. Utilizing that, applying the first derivative test, so at a pi over 3. <clears throat> so we go from decreasing to increasing, right to minimum, because at a pi over 3, right? And from increasing to decreasing, right here. We have relative maxima occurs at x equals 5 pi over 3. So, actually, graph confirms what we discovered.